Hey, this is Racquetball Tim, and this is a gameplay analysis video for Brian. Brian, thanks for sending me this video through email, and I hope I can help you improve your game. Brian is the one who is not wearing the white headband in this video. He's serving right now. Let's take a look at your stroke mechanics. Brian, throughout the video you're going to see uh, a few common themes as, as are pretty prevalent in my gameplay analysis videos. You start off with a good lob nick here. He takes it up. Um, this ball is a dead setup and anytime you get a setup like this that's coming down slowly, you want to contact the ball at the lowest point. And there you see the high contact point. That ball is above your waist. When you let the ball drop down below your knees, even around your ankles, the ball leaves your racket straight, heads toward the front wall straight, parallel to the ground, and it hits the front wall low, which limits the bounce. As we roll it forward here, watch how uh, the ball hits the front wall and jumps up. This ball was retrievable by your opponent, but he was out of position, so he missed it. A higher level player is going to get that and rip it right back down the line. So let the ball drop, swing flat and level, and you watch how the ball stays low rather than bounces up and goes deep. When I run my racquetball leagues throughout the week, I constantly tell people uh, after a shot like this, I say, you know, you could have got that. And they don't believe me. They say, I don't think I could have got that. It was out of my reach. So here's a perfect example of a shot that you could have retrieved if you were in the proper position, down and ready, on the balls of your feet, uh, ready to pounce like a cat. So you try to go cross court here, which is the right shot. You leave it up off the back. Now as he's hitting the ball here, I want to see where you are. There's a point of contact. You're not down and ready. Your right foot's actually elevated slightly. You should be down, facing forward like you are. Balls of your feet, ready to pounce like a cat. You gotta get that in your head. You gotta pounce like a cat. As we roll it forward, take a look at how close you were to getting this. See, right now you are down and ready, but it's too late. There's the crossover. This ball is within reach. I mean, you got it just as it bounced a second time. So the big difference there is you weren't down and ready. Work on that, and you're gonna cover a lot more shots. Every time you hit a shot in racquetball, you have to ask yourself, what are my percentages of successfully executing this shot? I live in Las Vegas. We have a bunch of gamblers here. We like to have good odds, not bad odds. Taking a shot like this that is you know, shoulder height and trying to hit it into that front right corner is extremely low percentage. The best shot there is either a ceiling ball to get him out of center or down the line or cross court. You just gave him an easy setup in the middle of the court. So work on your serve return and hit a safe shot. So in the next rally, you decide to hit a safe shot, and there's a, a little problem with your execution that I want to help you out with a little bit here. Uh, with him, I noticed throughout your game, you kept trying to hit to his backhand. So I'm assuming this was supposed to be a ceiling ball to his backhand. Take a look at how your body's angled there. Your right shoulder's not into the sidewall. You'll never be able to hit a backhand ceiling ball like this. So really drive that right shoulder into the sidewall and straighten yourself out just a little bit so you can hit a down-the-line ceiling ball. You missed the down the line. Actually, look at your right foot there, too. You're swinging around a little bit. You're off balance. So work on that backhand ceiling ball. It's the first shot I hit when I walk on the court to warm up. I do like how you get back to center here. You never give up on the rally. And uh, lucky for you, he missed the shot. But, uh, you know, if you hit that ceiling ball to the deep backhand corner against him, most of the times you're going to get a weak return. Uh, just don't tell him I said that. I don't want him mad at me. There's a simple rule I follow in racquetball. Um, when I have success, I either build on it 
or I try to repeat it. So he hit a good, it's kind of like a medium speed drive serve to his backhand that he completely missed, and he ate, you aced him. So instead of building on that or trying it again, you let him off the hook, and you hit a, a high lob serve to his backhand. I would have preferred either repeating the same serve or hitting the same serve to the right side, to his forehand. Now we're going to move forward a little bit here and talk about shot selection. You got him to the right side of the court. You know that because he ran around behind you. The right shot here is a down the line pass, not a pinch, not a cross court. If you pinch to the side your opponent's not on, the ball's going to go directly to them. Your contact point again was too high, so it's really difficult to hit a pinch rollout from that height. The ball goes right to him. Lucky for you, he missed it. But you're playing with fire. Keep that shot down the line when he's behind you. All right, Brian, we're going to get a little bit technical here. You asked me to help you with your serve return. I like how you're down and ready. I like how you're deep in the court. He hits kind of a medium speed lob. Now what I want to look at here is watch your left foot. Your left foot should lead, so you're absolutely correct so far. The next step should be your right foot that crosses over with your racket going up. Whoops, there's your left again. So you can see you're leading with your left, and at the point of contact, your left foot's actually leading. That's called a jab step. So what you want to do is start with your left, cross over with your right as your racket comes up, and then shuffle towards the ball. Always make sure your right foot is leading when you're making contact with that ball on your backhand side. Uh, the right shot there, of course, is a ceiling ball. Get him out of center court. Brian, at your level, and actually at any level, uh, your number one goal when they're in front of you is to, is to either pass them or go ceiling. So you try to hit a passer, and your stroke mechanics led you to hit a high shot. You want to let that ball drop so you can hit effective uh, pass. But I want you to understand, if you had gone ceiling, it was guaranteed that he would be out of center court. By trying an offensive shot when your opponent's in front of you, you're setting yourself up to fail. You want to go offensive when they're behind you and defensive when they're in front of you. I can tell that you're a thinker on the court because every time I give you some advice, the next rally you, you do what I was thinking. So that's, that's good. Here's the same situation. Now, instead of going for a pass, you go for a ceiling ball. Now you have him out of center court. So he's behind you and you're in front. He takes the offensive shot this time and gives you the setup. Do you see how that works in racquetball? You want them behind you. That's going to give you more opportunities. If you had let that ball drop, uh, of course, we're going to work on that with, as, your, as your game progresses. Let that ball drop and you're going to put it away most of the time. You tried to contact it too high, but the point is, is you got him out of center, you got him behind you, and you earned your opportunity. It's kind of the same situation here. You really should be squaring up to the side wall, get your right shoulder into that wall, take this either down the line because you want to pound his backhand, or, or hit it lower and you left it high again now you're stuck out of position and you give him a setup so I, I don't want to beat a dead horse but you, those are things you have to work on alright let's take a look at your backhand stroke mechanics now this rally starts off with the serve to your backhand comes off the back I love how you're patient you want to get your racket up and again you want to square up as early as possible your racket should already be up and you should already have uh, be facing the side wall you do get it up at the last second and you take a nice flat level swing and you, you went for an aggressive shot which you know I recommend sometimes I would say pinch in that situation 10% of the time to keep them honest and pound the lines 90% of the time there if you let the ball drop that's going to be a, a much better shot for you too but you did hit it good and you swung flat and level so I was proud of you there Now we'll take a look at your forehand mechanics. You hit a nice lob here. Um, try to keep your half lob serves to bounce on or around the dotted line. This one was perfect. I've, I've noticed some of yours were, were a little bit long. They came off the back wall. Some came up a little bit short. So keep that lob serve first bounce landing on or around the dotted line and it won't come off the back. 
in terms of your forehand mechanics. This setup is not too bad. I like to see you on your forehand get your left shoulder into the sidewall. It's different than the backhand. That way you're more square. Uh, it's pretty obvious you're going cross court here because your left foot's pointing that way. So to be a little more deceptive, get your left shoulder in that sidewall. I do like the flat swing. I like the shot selection there because your opponent was shaded to the right. But you got to let that ball drop. I really like what you do here, Brian. It's one of my favorite shots in the game. When someone saves the ball into the back, I like to run forward and cut it off right out of the air, and you did a perfect job. He's behind you, so any pinch will do in this situation, and you hit it in the left corner. Uh, great job. There comes a point when you're playing enough and when you get enough experience in racquetball that the game kind of slows down. So he hits a good down the line here. I like your try, your effort to save it there. I know you tried to go ceiling, but what I want to talk about is right here. Uh, eventually, this is going to be such an easy shot for you. It's not even funny. He's shaded way left. The down the line pass here is just the right shot every single time. So not only did you take the wrong shot by going cross court toward him, you also tried to over hit it. You can see your body's just, just kind of out of control there. As you hone your mechanics, you're just going to take a nice simple swing down the line. It's going to be almost effortless in that situation. couple things wrong here. He hits a lob serve to your forehand. You want to cut that off on the first bounce or out of the air. Waiting in the back corner is not recommended. It lowers your chances of success. I do like the ceiling ball choice. Nothing wrong with that, but you got to get back into center court. You kind of say you're walking back to center. You got to hustle back to center as quickly as you can. Watch how close you, you, know, you were to getting this ball. I mean, you almost got that before the second bounce. If you had hustled back to center right after you made contact with that ceiling ball, you would have got that ball. I try to tell people, think of center court as a magnet. It's pulling you back after every single shot. Here's a situation where poor shot choice got you into trouble and your hustle got you out of trouble. So you, you try that shot again here from shoulder height into that front right corner. Just You, you just got to you know hit passes there and ceilings. Kind of take that out of your game a little bit. But you hustle back to center. You force him deep with a ceiling ball. Now the advantage is you know, in your favor. You know, nice cross over here. You got your racket up and you took a cross court pass because he was deep uh, and shaded to the left. So that's the right shot there. You got yourself in a little bit of trouble earlier in that rally, but I like the hustle to get yourself out of trouble. When you hit lob serves and racquetball that don't stay in the corner and bounce out a little bit towards center court, you have to give up a lot of real estate. Look how much room he had there for that shot. So now you're running toward the back and you're in trouble, but you do a great job of getting back to center here and being prepared for his shot. He tries a little dumper in the right corner there, leaves it way up. You do a ni pretty nice job of squaring up. Again, get that left shoulder into that right wall on your forehand. And buddy, down the line shot here, down the line, down the line, down the line. Instead, you try to cross court uh, and you also skipped it a little bit. But uh, you, you, you earned your setup and you got to pound that one right down the line to win that rally. I love showing rallies like this um, for, for a couple of reasons, but look at this. You cross over, you lead with your right foot, you hit a ceiling ball to his backhand. So, of course, you're going to get a weak return. You got your racket up, squared up to the sidewall. What's the right shot? Down the line pass. Nice controlled swing there. You got good balance, and you hit it perfectly right down the line. Brian, this rally shows your potential. Take my advice. Keep those balls deep to his backhand. You're going to get a lot of setups. Brian, I noticed throughout the game that you serve 100% of your serves from the center of the service box. So for deception, I would like you to serve from everywhere in the service box. Left side, right side, center, 
in everywhere in between. Develop serves from everywhere, keeps your opponent guessing, and it keeps them on the defensive. Then they're not able to guess your serve. If you serve from one location, they tend to become predictable. I love the end of this rally. You got your racket up again, squared up to the sidewall. What's the right shot here? You know what I'm going to say, down the line. And you hammer this one right down the line. He just he can't get to it, and you win the rally with a perfect shot. Brian, it was fun watching you guys play. You look very competitive. Look like you're having a lot of fun, getting a great workout. I love to see that. I hope the video helps you improve. If you have any questions, send me emails. Send me follow-up emails. For everybody else, learn more at howtoplayracketball.org.